Hello and welcome to the Forensic Fiend YouTube channel. This presentation today will cover how to create a new case in NK7 and how to add the evidence file. Okay, so let's just assume that we have NCase open. Once you do open NCase, you do get this home tab where you can add a new case from and you can also open a new an existing case. What we're going to do today is we're going to create a new case. So we click on new case. It brings up the case options tab. Here we can um, enter firstly the case name, which is the name you want to give to the file that you want where, it's going to, where the case is going to be stored. Okay. Then where it says full case path, you select the option at the end of it and you locate a location where you want to store the case. I have already done this, that's why the button that appears on the right hand side of that option is no longer there. Okay. Then we have an option where we see it says use base case folder for primary evidence cache. That um, I prefer to use this option. What this basically means is all the cache files for your case are normally stored in a different location. However, I want to store it with the case, so I select that option. Then we have case info at the bottom, which is probably the most important aspect of creating a new case. We have three options there: case number, examiner name, and description. On the right hand side where it says value, if you click there for each option, it opens a page where you can enter the value. So the case number for the purpose of the video, just put number one. The examiner name would be the investigator's name, but for the purpose of the video, we'd use forensic theme. And then the description is just an overview of your case. So it's, it's for your own purpose, so you can go back and see why you created this case. You can also have the option to add extra fields um, and extra options there, it's up to you what you want to do, but this is the general basic that NCASE provides you with. You do have the option to edit and delete these options. Okay, so once you have done that, press OK. Which brings up the home tab for the case. If you look in the left hand top corner, you can see the case and in brackets it shows the case name. What we want to do is we want to add evidence. So the first option there is add evidence. There are other options there for you as well. But at the moment, we want to just add evidence. Okay, so when you do click on add evidence, you get these following options. You can add a local device, which is a file from your machine. You can add an evidence file, which is specifically formatted for NCase. And you can add a raw image as well. NCase also supports smartphone, and we do have an additional feature there called add crossover preview. But for, for, for the investigation that I've carried out, we're going to use an evidence file. I've just listed a few formats, formats which is compatible with NCASE. The format I'm using is a VMDK file, and that's basically created through the use of a virtual machine. Okay, so you click on Add Evidence File, you locate your file, and then you open it. Once you do that, it brings up the Evidence tab. As you see in the top left, it's got the home, and at the moment we are on the evidence one. Here you can see your evidence, we can see the location of the evidence, and um, we can also see the status of your evidence. Currently the evidence is unprocessed. NCASE recommends you to process your evidence first before carrying out any further investigation. So there is a video on processing evidence which, which you can watch also. Okay, just to conclude, in each investigation, an investigator who is using NCASE would require creating a new case. This is pretty simple. Every, every case that you create does require you to do this. Therefore, most investigators are familiar with this process if they do use NCASE. If they use any other forensic software, they may not be familiar with this. That's, this is the reason why we've created this video. It is very basic, but for some people, they may not know about this. Okay? So, the case info is the most important aspect to setting up a new case. Basically, it tells you the name, the examiner, and the reason why you created this case. And then the final option we have, um, final point of the conclusion, sorry, is that NCASE has made this process very simple. Because it's something which you have to do commonly, therefore it's not too hard, and once you've done it once, you won't have a problem with it again. So thank you for watching, and thank you very much from Forensic Fiend. Bye bye. Hello, and welcome to the Forensic Fiend YouTube channel. This presentation today will cover how to process the evidence. It is a continuation of the first video that I uploaded which was how to create a new case and how to add an evidence file. Okay, so we have the case created, we have the evidence file. Okay, we can see that the processing status of the evidence file is currently unprocessed. So what we need to do is to click process evidence, 
the arrow is pointing to where you need to blink. Once you do click that, we get the end case evidence processor page where you need to select the option process next to the evidence and then the section below will be able to, you'd be able to click into that section. Now NCASE provides you with many different features in the, in the evidence processor. The one that we're interested in for the type of investigation that we're doing is find internet artifacts. So we can deselect the other options and just keep the find internet artif artifacts option. Okay, once you do that, click OK. I have also selected the hash analysis option which creates an MD5 and SHA1 hash value for each of the files. However, further in the next video, I do show you how to hash the files separately. So, find internet artifacts and hash files are the two options that I've selected. Once you do select these options, you press OK. Now, just remember that the more options that you select, the longer it will take to process the evidence. Now, if you have a very large file for your evidence, it can take an awfully long time. You press OK. So, once the process is complete, well, whilst the process is ongoing, you will see a little bar on the bottom right hand side of your screen. Once it's complete, it will come up with this page and it will say the evidence is processed. Now we want to view the results from this processing. So what we do is click view and we click records. And that will show you the results from the processor, which we have here. As you can see on here, um, NCASE is saying that it's used four browsers. Whereas we know that we've used Internet Explorer and we've used Mozilla Firefox. Mozilla has created two files because it stores its information in two different locations. Okay, so we've got two files there. Um, with Internet Explorer, you can see that it's found records such as bookmarks. In the cache, we've got image, HTML, code, XML, text. We also got a history tab which um, NCASE has extracted information from, which, is, which provides you with visited links, um, the daily history, typed URLs, and we've got a cookie folder for Internet Explorer. So that's all for Internet Explorer. And then we've got the one for Mozilla underneath. And we've also got the one for Unknown Browser. The records, um, the left hand side is known as the tree pane, which I've just put, um, read out all the information from. You can return to the Homes tab. You've got the Evidence tab at the top. And you've got the Records tab. Okay, so the next video that I'm going to show you will show you how to create the hash list separately. And um, just to conclude, the evidence processor in NK7 is designed to do the job for you. NK does recommend that you process your evidence before you do anything else. Um, the NK processor has many features. It is a very, very, very strong tool. Um, in this case, we've used Internet Artifacts and Hash Analysis only. For example, the index feature would let you search for keywords and you also have other options there too. Now depending on the size of your evidence and the number of process you processes you select, the processing stage can take a very long time. I have experience sat in front of a computer for hours and I know people that have had to leave the computer on for days depending on the size of your evidence. Okay? Um, it is important to do further analysis of the evidence without using the case processor. Um, the case processor does do the job for you, however it is better to use the case processor plus look into the evidence yourself, look into the evidence file itself and find because sometimes there are many ways to hide data okay so thank you very much for watching Forensic Fiend hello and welcome to the Forensic Fiend YouTube channel today's presentation will cover how to create MD5 and SHA1 hash values for the files in the case and also how to add the hash files to the hash library okay so let's start so let's assume you have a case open and the case is processed. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that NCASE is currently connected to the collect hash library. And the way you do this is you click on the case and you select hash libraries. Um, if you are not in the correct hash library, um, you can change the hash library. Or if your hash library, you can see the hash library in this location, you just select it as your primary hash library. Um, it may be the case that you don't even have a hash library created to fill. If that is the case, what you need to do is you need to click on go back and then click cancel, then go into tools, manage hash library, and then create a new hash library. And then return to this screen and make sure you're in the correct, in case it's connected to the correct library. 
that's just a reminder as you can see there that my hash library is in the D drive um, is under the location test and then the hash library and then once you have that selected you just click OK uh, before we add the hashed file to the hash library just a few points ensure that NCASE is connected to the hash library like we just did there the correct one which contains relevant hash sets you may have many hash libraries so make sure you're connected to the correct one it is a good idea to reorder all files in the evidence screen so it is viewed by MD5 order this, mean, this makes it easier to select all hash files I'll show you that in a second and the next slide will show you how to hash all files and add them to the hash library you've just created ok so you want to select the home plate which is the green arrows on the left hand side if you select the first one it should display all files in the view pane oh, sorry in the table pane and if you select the index for at the top where the pointer is pointing towards, just under table, that will select all files or all files from the evidence. So you want to make sure every single file is selected. Okay, once we've got every single file selected, as you can see, you've got 59,406 files selected from 59,406. You want to click on entries and click on hash selected. Once you once you do this, you will see a green processing bar on the bottom right hand side and this will notify you of the hashing process once that is complete you will have to, where it says viewing in brackets it says entry, select that go to evidence and then click back into your evidence then it will display all the hashed values as I mentioned earlier in the few pointers that you want to reorder it in MD5 value you can see here that I've dragged the MD5 column across to here so you can see it more easily and then I've double clicked on it to reorder it so we've got from MD5, MD5 values down so if you write at the bottom of all these files there'll be files which are not which don't contain an MD5 value okay the process of selecting all MD5 values you select the first one you scroll down to the bottom where the last one is you hold down shift and you select the last one that will automatically select all the MD5 hash values from top to the last one okay once you've done that you click on entries again and then we click hash, add, add to hash library sorry I'm losing my words there okay so you click on add to hash library which will bring up this page um, you want to basically first in, in the white area there you want to right click and select new hash set and then you want to give the hash set a name a category and a tag the category is important when using the hash set in a condition in this case we're going to call it test after the reason for this is because I created one earlier called test before and um, that's for the condition video which we will watch after this one which will continue from this one it's up to you if you want to watch it okay so we've got test after you can see the count is zero that's because I've not yet added all the hash sets to this all the hashed files to this hash set okay so you select it the index box next to test that's the name I've given to the hash set and then you click OK and you'll see this processing bar across the page which will add all the hashed values to the hash set okay so just to conclude Hash sets are very useful to an investigator to identify if files have been changed. It adds integrity to files. So it's basically an algorithm which tells you, which creates a value for that file. And you can compare that with another one and see if there's any changes. Because if the hash set, if the hashed value, the MD5 value, or the SHA1 value is different, that means there's been a change in the file. One common reason is to remove known files from an evidence file using a condition. I'm going to show you that in the condition video and all that basically does is for example we've got two evidence files one from before a crime has been committed and one from after a crime has committed we hash all the files from the before and we hash all the files from the after and we compare the two and the files that are different are the files that have, been, that have had a change made to them okay and hash library can be of any size so you can have, you can have a number of hash, different hash sets in the hash library Okay, thank you for watching Forensic Team.